Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum, the refreshing, delicious treat that gives you chewing enjoyment, presents for your listening enjoyment, John Lund as... Johnny Dollar. Tom Benson, Johnny. You like traveling? Not particularly. Why? About six months ago, we wrote two policies, a man and his wife, Harrison and Maida Langley, double indemnity, 125000 each. You got a death claim already? No, but we're liable to. Got a letter from the underwriter. Says Langley claims somebody's trying to murder both him and his wife. Where do I go? Sundown Rubber Plantation, Kuala Lumpur, Federated States of Malaya. Well, I should have my passport around here somewhere. The makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum bring you John Lund and another adventure of the man with the action-packed expense account, America's fabulous freelance insurance investigator. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Friends, the makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Gum present these weekly adventures of Johnny Dollar because they know that millions of you enjoy Johnny Dollar. That's true of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum, too. It's enjoyed by millions, day in and day out. People find that chewing on a smooth, delicious piece of Wrigley's Spearmint Gum somehow makes time pass more pleasantly. Whether you're working, driving, shopping, or just taking things easy, that good, tasty chewing gives you enjoyment and satisfaction. So always keep a package of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum handy. And whenever you want a refreshing, delicious treat, chew a stick. You'll like it. You really will. Expense account submitted by Special Investigator Johnny Dollar to Home Office, Washingtonian Life Insurance Company, Hartford, Connecticut. The following is an accounting of expenditures during my investigation of the terrified Tuan matter. Expense account item one, $1,043.50. Airfare and incidentals between Hartford and Kuala Lumpur. I checked into the Coliseum Hotel and then walked over to Batu Road in the offices of George Allister, the rubber and tin broker who doubles in brass as your Malayan representative. Oh, filthy climate, Dollar, filthy. No man in full possession of his God-given senses would ever live out here. I don't understand why you came. Well, you wrote about the possible forthcoming murder of some policyholders, Alistair. Oh, yes, the Harrison Langley business. Utter rough, this talk about murder. Dismal obsession of disordered mentality. I wrote that letter only in the line of duty. You don't think there's anything to it? Oh, beastly nonsense. The jungle's breaking Langley down. He's a weakling to start with, no moral fiber. Turn that fan up a bit, huh? Yes, fellas disintegrating under the strain of trying to run that rubber plantation. Then there haven't been any attempts to kill Langley or his wife? No, sheer delusion. Concepts of a diseased mind. Uh, checked with the police. No reports made. No, oh, jungle's got him. That and the filthy terrorists. His plantation's in terrorist country? Hmm. Uh, sundown some 45 miles north of here. Everything north of Kuala's in terrorist domain. Filthy blighters. Ambushing traffic. Attacking villages, plantations... Murdering, burning, slashing rubber trees. No man's in his right mind would live in this filthy country. Yeah. How do I get out there? I hire an armored car. Only way to travel through the jungle. Take your own chances, though. Might be blown up by landmines. I won't take any responsibility. I'm not asking you to. So you, you make your investigation if you have to, Dollar. Won't get you anywhere. Out of waste of time. Then go back home to the States, out of this filthy climate, beastly country. Uh-huh. If you hate this country so much, Alistair, why do you stick around? Uh, oh, good question. Asked myself that many times. Always came up with the same answer. What's that? Making too much money. Well, that sounds reasonable. Expense account item two, $120. Rental of a 1949 Ford... Completely equipped with armor plating and bulletproof glass. The jungle trip was hot, but fairly uneventful. 
and only the barbed wire enclosure and the armed Malayan guards at the entrance to the sundown plantation gave evidence that this was anything but a quiet, peaceful land. Good afternoon, Swan. May I have your identification, please? Yeah, sure. Here it is. Hmm. Swan Dollar. You are here to speak with Swan Langley? That's the general idea, yeah. I think perhaps it would be wise for you to speak with Swan Crawford first. Crawford? Who's he? He is the plantation overseer, Swan. Why should I talk to him instead of Langley? Swan Langley is not well at the moment. He is still suffering from the shock. What shock is that? His wife, Swan. She has disappeared. Well, in that case, if you don't mind, I think I'll see Mr. Langley. Screen door, I could see part of the interior of Langley's house. There wasn't a sign of anyone around, but it looked cool and inviting in there. Too good a bet to pass up. You take one more step into this house and I'll kill you. Well, thanks for the warning. I mean it. Every word of it. You're not going to murder me the way you did, Maida. No, not a bit of it. You didn't expect me to be waiting here ready for you when you came sneaking in, did you? No, I'll bet you didn't. You win on all counts, Langley. Now, suppose you put that thing down and let's start talking sense. Not a move, I said. I know you're kind. Sneaky, tricky. Try to get me off balance. Look, my name's Dollar. I'm an insurance investigator. Washingtonian Life sent me out. You're lying. George Allister told me they wouldn't do anything about it. Wouldn't send a man halfway around the world to help me. He was right. I've got my identification here to prove it. You have identification? How do you think I got past those guards at the gate? Here. Take a look for yourself. What are you... Thanks. Hmm. 38 caliber Webley, isn't it? All right, go ahead. Use it. I think I'd rather have a drink first. Over there, the liquor cabinet. Thanks. You might take a good look at those papers while I'm mixing one. But well, these papers say you're you're Johnny Dollar, an insurance investigator working for. Why, I'm sorry, Dollar, dreadfully sorry. Please accept my apologies. Forget it. Now, suppose you tell me what this is all about. Oh, it's been a nightmare, Dollar. Constant threats against my life, terrorist raids, living in fear twenty-four hours a day. Sleeping with a gun at my side, seeing this plantation ruined before my very eyes, and helpless to stop it. It's no wonder I'm not responsible for my actions. Langley, it's not your plantation I'm interested in right now. It's your wife. Maida? Well, she's disappeared, hasn't she? Oh, yes. Yes, of course she has. But good Lord, man, what do you think's got me all upset this way? I was beginning to wonder. Well, let's start with your wife and go on from there. What makes you think that she's been murdered? What's the trouble here, Mr. Langley? Trouble? One of the yard men told me you heard a shot fired. There was, accidentally. Guns don't go off around here without a reason, mister. There's nothing to get excited about, Crawford. The dollar's an insurance investigator. Insurance investigator? So the vultures are gathering for the feast before the body's even cold. That's enough, Crawford. Nobody's asking you for your opinion. I don't need to be asked about something like this. If Mrs. Langley was my wife, I wouldn't be wasting my time talking to insurance men. Then let me remind you that Mrs. Langley is not your wife. Even though I'm certain the two of you wish you were. Why, you dirty little... Okay, Crawford, hold it. If you've got anything to say, suppose you tell it to me. Yes. That's a good idea, Crawford. Instead of my saying anything, why don't you tell Mr. Dollar all you know about the disappearance of my wife? That might help clarify things in a hurry. Okay. I'll be outside in the Jeep, Mr. Dollar. I'll take you on a personally conducted tour. That way you'll be sure of getting the truth from one. Well... There's part of your answer. Yeah? How's that? Well, it's obvious, isn't it? Crawford's in love with my wife. They've been carrying on behind my back for months. If anyone has a 
motive for trying to kill me. It's Crawford. Yeah, or it could be the other way around. That's been going on for three, four months now, Mr. Dollar. This crazy idea Mr. Langley has that somebody's trying to murder him and his wife. What makes you think somebody isn't? Hey, he says he gets threatening notes and telephone calls. Only nobody else has ever seen them or heard him talking to anyone. Uh-huh. Now, what about Mrs. Langley? Oh, he was driving her nuts. Walking around, afraid of a shadow. And carrying a gun every place he went. Spying on her and me. Trying to find out if something was going on between us. Now, was there? If you knew Mrs. Langley, you wouldn't even think of asking that question. But I don't. And I'm still trying to find out what happened to her. Well, I'll show you. Hey, you see where the barbed wire's been cut? Those young rubber saplings have been slashed? A terrorist raid? Looks like it, doesn't it? Well, what's this got to do with Mrs. Langley? The guard who met you at the gate, Bandar. He found the fence and trees that way, making his rounds this morning. He also found a sleeve torn from one of Mrs. Langley's blouses. It was covered with blood. And no one has seen Mrs. Langley since last night. You figure the terrorists took her with him? I think Mr. Langley staged the whole thing to make it look like that. Yeah? Why? He's in debt. A 50,000-pound note on the plantation's come and due in 60 days. His wife's insurance would cover that nicely. Well, it's an interesting theory. Let's go back, huh? Where's Mr. Langley, Bandar? He has left for Kuala Lumpur, sir, some ten minutes ago. Why? Did he say? Oh, no, sir. I only know that Tuan Langley received a telephone call, and then he left. Did he leave any message for me? Uh, I do not know if it was a message, sir, but uh, he made some strange comment concerning yourself. Oh? What was it? He was rather excited. I did not get all the words, but... It was something about giving you something to really investigate. And that was all? Yes, sir, that was all. Then he took a forty-five caliber automatic from the gun rack and left. Where's the phone, Banda? Yes, that's right, Don. I did speak with Langley a few minutes ago. Uh, nothing important. Just a routine business question about a shipment of rubber. You sure that's all it was, Alistair? Man, what's the matter, Dollar? Is the heat getting you down, too? Did either of you say anything about Mrs. Langley? Made her? Yes, she was mentioned casually. Casually? And he didn't tell you that she's disappeared, possibly been murdered? You being serious, Dollar? Did he tell you anything about it? No, not a word. Matter of fact, I was the only one who mentioned made her. Perfectly casual reference, as I told you. Well, what did you say, Alistair? Merely that I'd just finished having a drink with her at the Coliseum Bar. <laughs> Here's a suggestion that'll help you go through a busy day feeling more relaxed and satisfied. From time to time, especially when you're feeling tense or under pressure, chew a stick of Wrigley's Spearmint Gum. You see, chewing is a natural way to get rid of some of that pent-up tension. Chewing on a good, smooth piece of Wrigley's Spearmint Gum not only helps you feel more relaxed, but also gives you taste enjoyment. There's lots of refreshing, delicious flavor in Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum. You'll really enjoy it. So do what millions do. Always keep Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum handy and chew some every day. You'll feel more relaxed and you'll get more enjoyment out of the things you do. Next time you're at the store, get a few packages of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum. And now with our star, John Lund, we bring you the second act of Yours Truly, Johnny Dollar. Uh, 
I managed to get back to Kuala Lumpur in about half the time it had taken me to get to the plantation. George Allister was still grumbling about the climate, the country, and being involved in the Langley affair. Oh, confound it, Dollar. I told you Langley was disintegrating, but I didn't think he'd ever take a gun and go hunting his wife to kill her. Has he tried to get in touch with you? No. But he knows you saw Mrs. Langley at the Coliseum Bar. Oh, yes, yes, I told him that on the phone. Did she say anything about a raid at the plantation? About an attempt to kill her there? Oh, not a word. Claimed she was in town on a two-day shopping trip. And seemed chirp and happy. And she's staying at some hotel, huh? Mm-hmm. Uh, room 22 at the Crown House. Small, reasonable rates. She usually stays there when she's in town. Mm-hmm. Well, you better call the police and brief them while I'm on the way over. The sooner Langley's picked up, the better. Yes, of course. Oh, by the way, Alistair, you wouldn't happen to know who holds that 50,000-pound note against Langley's plantation, would you? Why, yes. I own the note. Why? Just curious. There wasn't any sign of the koala police in the Crown House lobby, so I went right up to Mrs. Langley's room on the second floor. Whatever preconceived ideas I might have had concerning what Maida Langley would be like didn't even come close. So you're an insurance man, Mr. Dollar. And that outfit of yours must have a hole in its head, sending you all the way to Koala because of those crazy ideas of Harry's. You don't think there's anything to him, Mrs. Langley? But nothing. The lad got himself into a lather with that crummy plantation that's riding his back. Been working too hard, that's all. You think that's all there is to it? Overwork? What else? All he needs is a good long vacation away from that stinking plantation. What went on out there this morning? What do you mean? Well, you were at the plantation when the terrorists made that raid, weren't you? Oh, that, sure. I'm getting so I don't pay any attention to those things anymore. They're happening all the time. Where were you when it took place? My room, packing for this trip to town. Why? Well, both your husband and Crawford have the idea that somebody staged that raid in order to kill you. Kill me? They both said you disappeared right after it. Well, sure I did. I drove to town. Anybody see you leave? Dan Dar was at the gate. He let me out. And Harry knew I was coming here. Your husband knew that? Sure, Harry's going to join me here. This place has got a kind of... Well, you might call it sentimental feeling for us. Oh, yeah? How's that, Mrs. Langley? I was staying here when I first met Harry. Lots of show people stay here. Oh, you were in show business? Oh, couldn't you tell? Sure. I was traveling around the Orient with a girly show. Nothing big time, you understand, but it was a living... Funny how those things turn out. Never figured I'd wind up someday being the wife of a rich plantation owner. Must have been quite a change. Oh, I know what you're thinking. Just another chorus cutie on the make who managed to snag herself a gold mine. I didn't say that. Well, don't. I happen to love that guy of mine. When he meets me here, I'm going to make him take me to Singapore for a month. Just the two of us. A real vacation. And you'll forget all this crazy business about people wanting to kill him and me. Everything will be okay, then. When we get back, we'll go... Get down! What was... Get down! Mr. Dollar? Yeah. You didn't get started on that vacation soon enough. The shots had come from the rear of another hotel, just across the alleyway from the Crown House. When I got over there, I found just about what I'd expected... A room filled with babbling tenants, the smell of burnt cordite, and an excited room clerk. Yes, yes, come on. It was a gentleman who rented this room. He had registered here not, oh, 30 minutes ago. I do not understand why he's not here now. Happen to remember his name? Oh, yes, Tuan. I take great pride in my work here. I, I remember the names of all the hotel guests. Well, I'm only interested in one, the man who rented this room. Oh, 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 yes, I... I remember quite distinctly. He registered here under the name of uh, Harrison Langley. I went back to Maida's room to get her out of there and under police protection. I could have saved myself the trip. She was gone. I spent the next three hours going round and round with the koala police. Eventually, they decided they'd try to pick up Langley and see what they could do about protecting Maida. Expense account item three, $10 for a double scotch on the rocks and a half-eaten dish of mame at the Coliseum Bar. I don't think the bill would have run that high, but when I saw the face in the crowded bund outside the window, 
I didn't feel like waiting for change. Still looking for her, Langley? What? Oh, it's you, Donna. Still looking for Maida? Then you... You knew I came here to Kuala to kill her. That's the general impression I received, yeah. It's a terrible thing. What a scheming woman can do to a man, Donna. Terrible thing. You want to tell me about it first, or do we go straight to the police? Doesn't really matter now, does it? Probably not. There's a little garden across the square. I used to meet Maida there. Do you mind if we talk about it there? Sounds like as good a place as any. I don't know, Donna. Maybe... Maybe it's because I'm a weakling. Maybe it's because when a man marries late in life, as I did, it hits him harder when he learns that his wife no longer loves him. You still think that's the real story? I know it is. She and Crawford. That's not the way she tells it, Langley. I should have known better. A cheap dance hall tramp. She only married me for my money. And you're convinced Maida and Crawford intended to murder you? Oh, no. Don't underestimate my sweet, darling wife, Dollar. She didn't want me killed. Then Crawford could force her into marrying him. <laughs> no. All she wanted was to have me adjudged mentally incompetent. Then she'd have control of my money and no strings attached. That's why she was so brazen about her affair with Crawford. Why they tried to break me down with all those threats against my life, fake those terrorist raids against the plantation. To make me crack, break down under the strain, commit some unreasoning act of violence. Uh-huh. Well... They almost succeeded. I came here to Koala today to kill Maida, to get rid of her once and for all. I couldn't see any other way out. No other answer for me. Murder's never an answer for anything, Langley. I'm not sure. I spent the whole afternoon walking the streets, thinking about it, trying to bring some semblance of sanity back into my life. I don't know, Donna. Maybe I shouldn't have changed my mind. Maybe if I'd gone to that hotel and killed her. I don't know. You still have the gun with you? Yes. Yeah. Here it is. Thanks. Well, the magazine's full. Gun doesn't look as though it's been fired. Why should it? I told you I changed my mind about killing her, didn't I? Yeah. So you did. I asked Langley to wait in the garden and went across to the Coliseum Hotel where I made three quick phone calls. The first was to the Koala police. They told me the slugs they dug out of the wall in Maida's hotel room were thirty-eight caliber. The second call was to the Sundown Plantation. Yes, sir. That is correct. One Langley's wife left the plantation early yesterday morning. And why did you tell me she disappeared? Uh, it was at her request, sir. She said to tell everyone that. She was planning some surprise for Tuan Langley. Uh-huh. What about Crawford? Is he around? No, sir. He left for Kuala Lumpur shortly after you did. Did he say when he was coming back? Oh, yes, sir. He said he would return by midnight tonight. Uh-huh. He had a gun with him, of course. Yes, sir. He not only took his, but also Tuan Langley's thirty-eight caliber Webley. The third call was to the room clerk of the hotel where the shots had been fired. His memory was still good concerning the man who'd registered as Harrison Langley. Six feet tall, brown hair, heavy set, about thirty. It was a perfect description of Crawford. I drove back to the garden in my armored Ford, picked up Langley, and we headed out on the jungle road leading back to the sundown plan. Sure, I'd get the proof I needed when we got there. But I was wrong. I got it when we were still 15 miles away. Bullet! Must have been a landmine. Oh, if some poor devil ran over it in his car. I will find out. Here 
Here it is, Dollar. An armored car. Blown clear off the road. Yeah. there any? Not a prayer for either one. The, the gun he's wearing. It's my Webley. I know. He used it this afternoon. Looks like I was the target and not made it. So she died out here like this. Instead. Cheap chorus girl. All she wanted was money. So she married for it. But that wasn't enough. She had to scheme and connive to break me down, destroy me. So it could be all hers, alone. Well, she didn't succeed, Dollar. And I'm well rid of her. She deserved to die like this by violence. Just another dead animal in the jungle. Uh, Mr. Langley, let sheep, no good tramp. That's all she was. Believe me, I'm well rid of her. Well rid of her. She deserved to die like this. Nothing but a cheap, cold digging. Cold digging. <laughs> 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 Expense account item four, $39.70. Hotel bill and incidentals in Kuala Lumpur. Expense account item five, $1,083.25. Airfare and incidentals from Kuala Lumpur back to Hartford. Expense account total, $2,296.45. Remarks? Sorry I couldn't save you the loss on Maida Langley's death claim, but if it's any consolation, you're in good company. Everybody concerned seems to have lost something. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. Friends, when you've got a package of Wrigley Spearmint Chewing Gum with you, you're all set for refreshment and enjoyment at any time. At work, at home, in your car, wherever you are. Just slip a stick of delicious Wrigley Spearmint gum in your mouth and keep on with what you're doing. See how refreshing that lively Spearmint flavor tastes. How it cools your mouth and helps keep your throat moist. Enjoy the good chewing, too. It'll make the time pass more pleasantly for you. And remember, chewing Wrigley Spearmint gum helps keep breath sweet and teeth clean. So it's a nice thing to have with you at all times. Get some next time you're at the store. That's Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum. Healthful, refreshing, delicious. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, brought to you by Wrigley Spearmint Chewing Gum, stars John Lund in the title role and was written by Sidney Marshall with music by Eddie Dunstetter. Featured in tonight's cast were Howard McNear, Ben Wright, Jack Edwards, Bill Johnstone, Jack Moyles, and Virginia Gregg. Yours truly, Johnny Dollar, is produced and directed by Jaime Del Valle. The makers of Wrigley's Spearmint Chewing Gum hope you enjoyed tonight's story of Johnny Dollar and that you're enjoying delicious Wrigley's Spearmint Gum every day. This is Charles Lyon inviting you to join us again next week at this same time when from Hollywood, John Lund returns as... Yours truly, Johnny Dollar. This is the CBS Radio Network. <laughs>